Hey everybody, Mr. Keon here. I'm um, giving a quick breakdown on what we're going to be doing today and our lesson as we continue our research on Rome. So today we're going to look at the social hierarchy in ancient Rome. Uh, and to kind of get that, you should know what that term hierarchy, which is essentially a system of ranking people according to status or authority, basically who has the most power and who has the least. And we're going to see that there's different levels of hierarchies within Roman society. First would be within the Roman family. Much of Roman life centered around family relationships, in particular blood relationships. Um, your extended family uh, was a very big part of your whole family. Um, not just your immediate you know, family of your mother, father, siblings, uh, no, your aunts, your uncles, cousins, everyone was very much uh, intertwined with one another. Um, and in a, ho in a household, in the average family, uh, the pater familias, uh, or paternal, if you think of that word, which means father, was the head of family. Um, and then pretty much any other male relative would come next, like uncles, Older brothers, uh, older cousins, the older, the more powerful. Um, the oldest male was the uh, patriarch of the family who would kind of have a say on everyone. Um, women would run the households and a lot of the everyday stuff that went on at home and were in charge of raising children, often also raise, you know, um, running slaves. Many Roman families, especially in uh, the patrician class, owned slaves. So they would be in charge of kind of coordinating that. But overall, they, they didn't really have a lot of power. They are pretty much under control of their husbands and um, were pretty much, you know, centered around their home. Um, if you're going to rank it, you know, from top to bottom, the Older males then would be the uh, the younger males, and then the women, then the youngest children, and then slaves. Um, typical family in Rome, um, you were expected to be married by 15 or 16, zoinks. But when you consider the average lifespan is about 27, that's, that's pretty crazy. Uh, especially women had a very rough life, uh, death and childbirth, and death for children was very common. Um, that's why they were encouraged to have such large families because they often would have many children who would not live past um, their first year. Um, it was a tough time to be alive uh, on, on planet Earth, and um, especially uh, for women who uh, childbirth was very dangerous. Um, so if you had somebody that was older, that was elderly, uh, they're expected to be cared for and were venerated, especially an older male figure, uh, male, uh, the male figures in a family, a father, a grandfather had almost total control over their children's lives. They made choices of who they married, what businesses they went into. They could even choose life or death. Um, there was a custom, uh, probably related to the Greeks, uh, with the Spartans, uh, who the Romans are pretty similar to in some ways, culturally, that, um, they would expose or leave a child out, abandon the child if they felt that it was weak and couldn't, uh, be, uh, up to snuff for their family standards, um, which is a pretty sad thing to think about. Um, then when we get into the society, uh, the patricians, uh, were the, the highest ranking people. The plebeians were the common everyday people, the working class, farmers, artisans. Uh, many of them didn't own land, whereas the patricians own most of the land and they're treated like royalty. They are, they can trace their family back to you know, they said Romulus and Remus to the oldest uh, part of the Republic of Rome. And they feel like they have more privilege because of that. But in a lot of ways, they are dependent on one another. Um, plebeians needed the patricians for financial uh, support. Often they were employers. 
And they often would try to uh, look to them to get uh, political protection, government connections. If you connected yourself as a plebeian to the right patrician, that made you more pop, more powerful. And patricians count on the plebeians as a source for labor, as soldiers, uh, to run so much of uh, the different aspects of their world. Uh, without one another, they, uh, the system wouldn't work. Um, and as a plebeian, one of the things that you would do is try to find the right patrician family or uh, pater familia that you would kind of pledge your loyalty to uh, and essentially work as a servant. Um, and here you see them pledging themselves to the patrician. Uh, the, plebe the plebeians would work to try to get loyalty with a specific uh, pater familia. And then the if a plebeian won that loyalty, they would become a client. Think business terms today. Once they're a client, they get financial protection. The patrician will financially reward them. Uh, also speak on their behalf on government matters to give them protection. But... On the other hand, the patrician, as their patron, as the person who is taking care of them now, gets loyalty, A, and gets someone to do all their dirty work for them. And essentially, it, a plebeian would almost work as a servant. And what's even crazier is, let's say I work as a client to uh, Fred the, the patron, uh, Fred the patrician is my patron, He Fred dies, well now... Fred's son inherits my loyalty and then my son's loyalty, so on and so forth. So this could be passed on from generation to generation. Um, the plebeians did fight, as we know, for more uh, power as Rome's power, the plebeians' power definitely grew. Uh, they pushed for representative and representation in the assemblies and tribunes, as we talked about. Push for the creations of, of the Twelve Tables that were posted in the forum for all to see, so everyone can know what the laws were. And as the empire expands, most of the citizens that come into the empire are of that, that plebeian, plebeian class, that working class, merchants, artisan class. I'll just kind of get a little bit more of a view of it. I, gave, I found this uh, social pyramid uh, graphic organizer that kind of shows you the whole structure of Roman society from the, you know, during the empire, the emperor, and then, you know, the powerful magistrates or consuls uh, and senators down into the patricians, who, like, I like that they said they're the VIP of Rome, the plebeians who are the common everyday people, uh, craftsmen, not very educated, and then lastly, on the bottom, are the slaves who work in the worst, most horrible conditions. 